What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I want to take a look at a Pennsylvania middleweight by the name of William Stephan, better known as Billy Seuss. Now, Billy Seuss was born August 2nd, 1915 in Farrell, Pennsylvania. He died September 5th, 1998. He was 83 years of age at the time of his death, and he was buried at Holmesdale, Pennsylvania. Now, Billy stood six foot and weighed 155 to 174 pounds. He had total bouts of 41, 34 wins, 13 KOs, six losses, and one draw. He was managed by Dick Powell and Paul Mouse. Now, Billy was a phenomenal amateur. He fought in the NCAA boxing tournaments. He dominated those divisions so badly and so masterfully that he was outlawed for fighting in the Golden Gloves competitions. And in fact, he was no longer eligible to fight in those collegiate events because Billy Sewells would knock out every collegiate fighter he competed against. He had an outstanding right hand. They thought he was a professional. But he was just a powerful puncher. Billy Shoes would eventually turn professional in 1938 and he would have 12 bouts. Billy Seuss would do the unthinkable. He would face one of the most brilliant boxers in the last 50 years. He was also from Pennsylvania. His name was Charlie Burley. And he realized he made a terrible mistake. Because from the opening bout, Charlie Burley not only outbox, but he would outpunch, outbang, outstep, outmaneuver, outthink. The unseasoned professional, Billy Seuss. In fact, it would become a, such a one-sided verdict. It was just as bad as when Billy Seuss was in the NCAA tournaments outclassing his opponents in those events. Charlie Burley was that good of a fighter. In fact, he was a master. Salute to Charlie Burley. In 1939, September 25th, Billy Seuss would be matched up with Georgie Abrams and he would lose a 10 round decision. Now, Georgie Abrams was an outstanding fighter. In fact, he faced Gary Indiana's middleweight and future champion, Tony Zale. Tony Zale was a vicious body puncher. And he outworked Georgie Abrams. You see, Tony Zell was not a world champion. He was a state champion. And he had to solidify that. And he did it with Georgie Abrams. Because Tony Zell had our box, Al Hastak. But in order to become world champion, he had to fight for that vacant slot. And Georgie Abrams would be his opponent. And although it was a back and forth opponent, he finally nailed Georgie Abrams. To the point where he would dominate the rest of the fight. And eventually he would become the middleweight champion of the world. Fascinating fighter from Gary, Indiana was Tony Zale. Tony Zale would go on to have wars with Rocky Graziano, a Brooklyn middleweight. Rocky Graziano had one of the hardest right hand punches outside of Billy Sue's in the middleweight division. 
And these two men, Graziano and Tony Zale, would have outside of Thomas Hearns and Marvin Hagler, greatest middleweight battles in the entire history of the game. Tony Zale, world middleweight champion, as he defeats Georgie Abrams, 15 round scrap. Georgie Abrams will defeat Billy Seuss. Billy Seuss would handle himself well enough against Georgie Abrams to earn a shot at the title. With Ken Oberlin. You see, he faced Ken Oberlin. 1940. He defeated Ken Oberlin. He would face Georgie Abrams a second time and lose a second time. But he got his shot with Ken Oberlin again. And this time he defeated him. And became the brand new middleweight champion of the world. Recognized by New York State. You see, he never got a chance to solidify that title. You had to solidify the title. Sefino Garcia was the middleweight champion in 1940. And he had to face the three-time champion, Henry Armstrong. Henry Armstrong was one of the greatest fighters of all time. I have him ranked number four on my all-time rankings list. Phenomenal fighter, featherweight, welterweight, lightweight champion. And he moved up in 1940 to face Severino Garcia. And they called it a draw. Henry Armstrong won that fight with a landslide. Referee ran out of the ring to this day. You can't find that referee, tombstone or anything. Biggest robbery, second half of the century. Now, Sefino Garcia was an outstanding Filipino, welterweight, who Henry Armstrong had defeated several times. He would become a middleweight. Sefino Garcia, one of the greatest Filipino fighters of all times. But Henry Armstrong would be robbed in 1940. As you can see here, Henry Armstrong, 1940, March 1st, Los Angeles, 10-round draw for the midway title. Amazing. Sefino Garcia, Filipino middleweight. He was a contender and a master of the bolo punch. Billy Seuss would also face middleweight champion Eddie Bay Visco. Phenomenal fighter was Eddie Bay Visco. He lived in Syracuse, New York, and he could fight. 1930s and 1940s was a year of masterful fighters. Another very good boxer at that time was Fred Apollosi. Very good boxer. 
He was recognized by New York State as a champion as well. Billy Suits, phenomenal fighter. Champion from May 4, 1941, November 1941. He was a state champion. Didn't get a chance to solidify the title. But he was a very, very good boxer. Thanks for helping me visit Billy Seuss. Pennsylvania's middleweight champion. Salute to Billy Seuss. Salute to my subscribers. Thanks for hanging in there with me. This is Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fistic of Series. Dating all great fighters and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Peace.